if you want to form a premium brand, never go into discounts. I think it's a rabbit hole that you can never get out of. Welcome to Honest Ecommerce, a podcast dedicated to cutting through the BS and finding actionable advice for online store owners. I'm your host, Chase Clymer, and I believe running a direct-to-consumer brand does not have to be complicated or a guessing game. On this podcast, we interview founders and experts who are putting in the work and creating real results. I also share my own insights from running our top Shopify consultancy, Electric Eye. We cut the fluff in favor of facts to help you grow your e-commerce business. Let's get on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Honesty Commerce. I'm your host, Chase Clymer. And today, I'm welcoming to the show the Chief Growth Officer of an amazing brand that helps to create weighted blankets. Their mission is to create a calmer, more collected world, one nap at a time. Joaquin Arshi, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good. Uh, thank you very much for the intro, Chase. I'm excited to, to to dive in. So you're the chief growth officer over there, but you've been with the brand since day one. So just take me back uh, to kind of the the foundation. Where where did the idea come from? Uh, like, was it first pitched to you by your family? How did it work? So I think like we started Beravi with one mission that was create a calmer, more collected world, one nap at a time. Like we launched. Uh, our signature weighted blanket back in December 2018. Uh, we the goal was to help many people that are struggling with a sleep disorder uh, sleep better. And how it started was Catherine, the founder, was looking for natural solutions to help her sleep better. And through her research, she found weighted blankets. And she tried them, she tested them, and it worked wonders for her. It helped, it helped her sleep better. The problem that she had was the same problem that multiple people that use traditional weighted blankets have. That the brand blanket is not breathable, that it's not sustainable, that it is looked with a bit of a, at that point it was looked with a bit of a stick. So while weighted blankets started in skyrocketing in popularity, the landscape of the products on the market did it has, didn't change until that point. And the products were the traditional weighted blankets with shifty beads, with synthetic materials. And our goal was to bring Vera v, to bring the benefits of weighted blankets to a wider audience. So we had three essential pillars. And I guess the first two are in design. Uh, the first one was make it more breathable and more sustainable. And with the construction of the product, uh, the amazing design that Catherine did, uh, it made it needed, which made it naturally breathable, and it made it sustainable because a difference to other weighted blankets, we use cut, organic cotton and tensile, which is the most sustainable fabric in the world. And besides that, we try to make it more common. And I think the looks and feel of the, uh, of the napper, uh, help this purpose because people were proud and happy to have a weighted blanket in their home, in their sofa, to show it to their friends, which made more of a virality moment, more something that they could share on Instagram with their friends. And I think like just to show a bit of how it was for us, I remember uh, back in 2018 in December when we launched, we expected that the inventory that we hold would last for three months. And two days after launch, we were sold out because it, it was just a concept totally different. Uh, so it, it was great. I think it was a great launch for us. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that is something I noticed about the products is they are different than other products that I've seen on the market kind of in that category. And um, what you said earlier, I f- see a lot of commonalities between uh, founders in that um, starting the brand was kind of a natural evolution of a founder just trying to solve the problem for themselves and then realizing you know there might be a gap in the market and you know those that have that entre- entrepreneurial bug kind of were like well let's explore this and see what happens i think like yes i think i totally agree with you because i also heard so many studies similar to it and seeing Catherine uh on a personal life standpoint trying to look for new solutions and trying to see where the gap was, 
was pretty inspiring and pretty great uh, to see uh, hand on hand. Absolutely. So um, let's let's fast forward a little bit to you guys launch the brand. You have an amazing launch. So I feel there's a lot of listeners out there that are you know, approaching that phase. And one of the most difficult things that I I believe as a startup in like the e-commerce space is finding that first initial kind of pocket of customers to sell to. So what was your guys like go to market strategy? How did you, you know, figure out how did you get eyes on the product? I think something that was very important for us is having a PR moment. When we started, we wanted to make sure that we had PR around it. I think like the product and the innovation that Catherine had was newsworthy and worth to share. So when we started, we started with a PR agency uh, that helped us boost the virality of the product. And we started as well on Facebook and Google. We, sorry, we didn't have to start Facebook and Google like before six months of starting the brand because we were just naturally taking the boost of getting the, the press hits and trying to find a fit for, for ourselves in the market. So you guys had a PR agency and they were getting you placements uh, and you were then using those placements and putting some paid dollars behind it to increase the reach and to increase the eyes on the product pre-launch. No, in lo- at the launch moment. Uh, at the launch. Pre-la- gotcha. Pre-launch... Uh, there was a lot of work on the how the branding and the establishment of the way of the brand more than the making a, a viral moment before it. Absolutely. And um, how soon after the launch or, or was it in uh, tandem of the launch did you start to tackle like traditional retail partnerships as well? Traditional retail partnerships, actually, we started in October uh, 2019. We st- our first partnership was with West Elm. And I think there were a few reasons why we did this. The first one was, the, I think we have m- multiple commonalities on, on values with a brand like West Elm and the Williams Sonoma brand. Because they are fo- but pretty focused on sustainability. And that's something that we could offer from day one. Having the tree napper and the cotton napper both made out of very organic products. And the second point that we wanted to emphasize there was trying to show to the market that the weighted blanket is more of a, it became more of a standalone product before it was in the bedding sector. You only see sheets. You only see comforters. Now you could all also see weighted blankets. And the weighted blanket that you'd see was better. Absolutely. And I would feel that getting a placement like that in such a, an amazing you know, legacy store helps add to the credibility of, of the startup. So did you see um, any sort of crossover to you know getting placement in West Elm stores to helping increase sales on your native direct consumer platform? Absolutely. For us, it was a very proud moment. On the personal side, I tell you, it was a very proud moment being in a flagship store as West Elm is. And then many people started recognizing actually for being the weighted blanket that was at West Elm. And then that helped us boost our credibility. And as you said, something that was funny is when people started Googling weighted blankets West Elm, that is what that keyword started rising, and we also see the benefits of it. Yeah, obviously, it's not as strong as like uh, you know. There's the whole concept of the Shark Tank effect, uh, but I, I would say like something that's you know a step below that would obviously be like getting placements at you know traditional retail where there's a lot of high foot traffic. You know, Targets, West Elms, all that stuff. I, I see that it, that's another common thing that I, I hear from a lot of brands that are on here. They're like, yeah, there's like. Well, not only are you doing a big purchase order and, you know, economy of scale is going up a little bit. It's just like there's also like the brand awareness is, is through the roof. That's stuff that, you know, you don't even consider. And at some point, actually, something that I forget to mention was, uh, and I just remember, uh, we were the brand that people were looking more in the Western search bar. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Yes. 
that, that was awesome for a while. Yeah, that definitely that definitely helps you, uh, you know, keep that partnership going. It's like I think people like the product. Yeah, I, like I could say that people do. <laughs> awesome. So, starting a brand is always difficult. And you know, is there anything that comes to mind that you wish that you maybe didn't do, or if you could go back in time, be like, hey, Joaquin, don't do this. Uh, so you could try to help any of the listeners uh, avoid, you know. Uh, a learning curve that you know something that you've <laughs> taken on. I think I can tell you something that I would do again. If you want to form a premium brand, never go into discounts. I think it's a rabbit hole that you can never get out of. And mm -hmm. something that we have done at Veravi, it's never started getting into discount placement because then people have in mind as well. That is a discounted brand that you will always get it discount. And I think that's not healthy for the growth of the brand, especially if you want to g grow bootstrap as with it. Absolutely. It, actually, before we press record, uh, you mentioned, um, how you guys kind of circumvented, um, having call to actions without offering discount codes. Could you elaborate on some of the things that you've tested there? Yes, we have done a couple of strategies. We have two, three shipping service options. One that is free and that, that it's a bit, a bit that cost that has a cost. And what we try to do to incentivize it instead of discounting the product is just getting access to this higher level of shipping option. So we have offered multiple codes that is free faster shipping here to collect leads or to identify the sales that we have gone through a podcast. That's another thing you guys have been testing the water with podcast placements. And I know that's a little too soon to tell, you know, if whether or not it's working, but uh, are there any initial wins that have come out of kind of uh, testing that market? I know that's, I think podcast placements are extremely new for direct to consumer brands. And I'm sure a lot of the listeners are curious how it plays out. I can tell you on a personal side, we think it has been very positive because we have seen many direct sales from them or many people using the code that we have given them, mm -hmm. uh, which I have to assume is a direct sale from them. Uh, but I think it's a market that it's totally worth exploring, but it wouldn't be the first market that I would go to. I think there is a lot of brand work that you need to do before start on Facebook, do your fundamentals on Facebook, in Google, in the traditional markets before you move to podcast. Yeah, I would definitely say that as well. I think podcasts are... Well, as a podcast host, I can tell you right now that the analytics that you get from your syndication is garbage. And so it's a lot of you know customer interview. It, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty crazy, man. Uh, I, it's, just, it's interesting to me that podcasts are such a huge medium now. And it's built on like toothpicks and gum. It's like so weird. Like you don't get like actual subscribers from any of the services. Like the metric that everybody gets is downloads, and then it'll tell you where those downloads are. And that's about it. That's it. Uh, and I guess how? Well, a question for you: How do you decide whether your topic has work? Or is it just because of the download? Yeah, I mean, it's the the downloads are are pretty much are the main metric that you can look at, and then you can kind of do some cross referencing. Obviously, for us, for example, we have a newsletter that goes kind of in tandem with Honest Commerce. So I try to you know uh, email a list every once in a while and try to interview them to get a little bit more information about kind of the types of people that are subscribing and a little bit more demographical data um, to use. Uh, but we, you know, we we exist in a very, very specific niche. So all the sponsors that you guys hear on the show, they're like, I want to be like, they know for a fact the audience that listens to this show is the exact audience they want to get in front of. So it makes my job a little bit easier. Yeah, that's great. I think there is also a lot of research. We we did a lot of research to the demographics of each podcast that we wanted to to launch in before going it before going in it. If you're struggling with scaling your sales, maybe Electric Guy can help. Our team has helped our clients generate millions of dollars in additional revenue through our unique brand scaling framework. You can learn more about our agency at electriceye.io. That's E L E C T R I C E Y E.io. Mesa is the Shopify expansion pack to level up your brand. By turning all your internet connected apps into your business epicenter, Mesa can lighten your workload and tame the day to day chaos of running your store. 
Join other successful brands that have learned how to balance clever workflows with a solid infrastructure to get more done without more overhead. Whether you need to order data in Google Sheets, products on Etsy, or customers added to HubSpot, Mesa has you covered. Peace of mind is right around the corner when all your apps are working seamlessly together. To put it quite simply, Mesa is a better way to work. Search Mesa, that's M-E-S-A, in the Shopify App Store and download the app today. Is your store holiday ready? Now is the time to make sure you and your team are prepared for the busy season ahead. Gorgeous, an omni-channel help desk built for e-commerce has machine learning functionality that takes the pressure off small support teams and gives them the tools to manage a large number of inquiries at scale, especially during the holiday season. Gorgeous combines all your different communication channels like email, SMS, social media, live chat, and even phone into one platform and gives you an organized view of all your customer inquiries. Their powerful functionality can save your support team hours per day and makes managing customer orders a breeze. Merchants can close tickets faster than ever with the help of pre-written responses integrated with customer data to increase the overall efficiency of customer support. Their built-in automations also free up time for support agents to give better answers to complex product-related questions, providing next-level support, which helps increase sales, brand loyalty, and recognition. Eric Bandholtz, the founder of Beard Brand, says, We're a seven-figure business, and we have essentially one person on customer support and experience. It's impossible to do it without tools such as Gorgeous to help us innovate. Learn how to level up your customer support by speaking to their team. Visit gorgeous.grsm.io slash honest. Mention this podcast when you sign up to get two months free. That's G-O-R-G-I-A-S dot G-R-S-M dot I-O slash H-O-N-E-S-T. Our partner Rewind can protect your Shopify store with automated backups of your most important data. Rewind should be the first app you install to protect your store against human error, misbehaving apps, and collaborators gone bad. It's like having your very own magic undo button. Trusted by over 100,000 businesses, from side hustles to the biggest online retailers like NYX, Gatorade, and Movement Watches. Best of all, respond to any of their welcome emails and mention this podcast, Honest E-Commerce, and get your first month absolutely free. Getting an online business off the ground isn't easy. So if you find yourself working late, tackling a to-do list that's a mile long with your fifth cup of coffee by your side, remember... Great email doesn't have to be complicated. That's what Klaviyo is for. It's the email and SMS platform built to help e-commerce brands earn more money by creating genuine customer relationships. Once you set up your free Klaviyo account, you can start sending beautiful branded messages in minutes thanks to drag and drop design templates and built-in guidance. And with e-commerce specific recommendations and insights, you can keep growing your business as you go. Get started with a free account at klaviyo.com slash honest. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash H-O-N-E-S-T. So I know you guys have a unique approach when it comes to marketing. And I know that you had an anti-Black Friday campaign last year. Can you give me uh, some details about that? Yes. Uh, I can... <laughs> Thank you. Because yes, it was a bit of a different approach, I would call it. Uh, we had a campaign with the slogan, sleep on it. That was instead of helping the customers by giving them discounts, by offering any sort of promotion, we made it a bit more difficult to purchase. So when they added to cart, we started a pop up that it says, are you sure that you want to buy? And then after they click yes, when they Go again to check out. We ask them, how do you feel at this moment? It is not the most traditional way <laughs> to tackle Black Friday, I have to say. Uh, but the results were just great uh, for us, at least. It's very, it's very tongue in cheek. It's very funny. Yeah, it was very difficult to, for people to buy. One day before we launched a, uh, a campaign that said, uh, Tomorrow we're launching a product in Black Friday and for the product. Uh, and we just gave, we started talking about impulse buying. That is something that you shouldn't do. So we kind of gave us hint mm-hmm. of where this was going. Uh, and our goal was to, we partner with, uh, Duke's university, uh, because we want to incorporate man- mindfulness into e-commerce, into the e-commerce experience. 
from start to finish. And as I mentioned, this included, uh, are you sure that you want to buy an, an, an emotional frame of mind when purchasing? And I think the results that we got and what impressed me the most, it was that the people that were targeted with this product and that received, uh, uh, that were there, all of, most of them had a calm state of mind or a happy state of mind when buying the product. And the return rate was almost zero for the product, especially in these days when everybody for gives extended returns, getting almost zero returns on this product was amazing because that means that people actually connected with the values of the brand and they really thought about buying it before buying it. Let me tell you, let me tell you honestly, Black Friday was still our biggest day of a year and it was great. And you did that without discounting. And without discounting and we making it difficult. Uh, and I think it also built our community stronger because it told our consumers, we are not just here to make you buy. We are here as a part of the journey of the consumption of the utilization process, which I think is key. So Joaquin, tell me more about Barry's views on like napping and sleep, and especially as it relates to your staff and their work schedules. I found this pretty interesting. Oh yeah. So, so thank you, Chase. Our brand prioritizes physical, mental, and emotional well-being a lot. I think it's one of our core values for our workers. And part of this is offering like flexible hours, like our typical run hours are from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And each team member has the flexibility to have their schedule and the rhythm how they like. I personally daily take a nap like for 30, 40 minutes. And for me, it makes two pockets of great productivity, one in the morning and one after the nap. And it just makes your work more efficient and you are happy that you're working and then you not only see a result from me, but also from the team. I think the whole team loves the idea and the culture that we have built throughout it. It's more of a napping culture. <laughs> that's, a, that's an amazing culture there. I, I think uh, we're looking at adopting that here at our agency. Is, uh, is there anything that I forgot to ask you today that you think would resonate with our audience? There is one more campaign that I would like to talk about similar to the Black Friday. Mm -hmm. That I wanted to tell other marketers to be a bit more bold with their campaigns. And for example, we start, we wanted to incorporate humor to one of our days and it was the April Fool's Day. So what we did, it was also another launch. We did a full PR story, a full, a lot of instant stories, a lot of campaigns are our, uh, Instagram post that we were launching the smallest weighted blanket in the world. <laughs> it, it was uh, a, a blanket for hedgehogs. So we got a few hedgehog influencers. I don't know if you have ever seen them online. It was a great campaign. I didn't know that there was such a thing as hedgehog influencers. Yeah, they, it's crazy. They have like 400K, a million, a million followers. And they were, we were having pictures with them with the smallest nubbler, the smallest nubbler in the world. And then that day, everybody was crazy about it. Everybody engaged a lot. And that's the day that we launched the hugger. That was actually our biggest snapper mm -hmm. uh, in the world. That was the, the queen's as weighted blanket. But everybody was so engaged that the launch was such a success. And they are still, people are still asking about uh, weighted blankets for hedgehogs today. Uh, that's, that's hilarious. I'm definitely going to have to look, look that one up. I, feel like I remember seeing that come out back then, but I'm definitely going to look into it more now just because I'm more curious about this hedgehog content. Thank you. Yeah, I think it was great on the, on the personal note. Awesome. Well, Joaquin, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and sharing your insights. I, I, I know that this one's going to be fantastic. Uh, thanks again. Thank you very much, Jason. Thank you very much for having me. All right. I can't thank our guests enough for coming on the show and sharing their knowledge and journey with us. We've got a lot to think about and potentially add into our own business. You can find all the links in the show notes. Make sure you head over to honestecommerce.co to check out all of the other amazing content that we have. Make sure you subscribe, leave a review. And obviously, if you're thinking about growing your business, check out our agency at electriceye.io. Until next time.